All right, I'm sure you're wondering how the heck the title is in clickbait. Togepi in gold and silver is the 13th. It's actually tied for 13th worst in terms of stats. Its move pool is okay, but nothing special. And yet somehow the Pokemon we all got as an egg that many of us never really used. The Pokemon in the anime that really never attacked for much of the season it was introduced. This Pokemon is going to obliterate the entire game without evolving, without items, anything like that. Yes, it will. But don't take my word for it. We have 16 gym leaders, five elite four members and red. Surely one of them will be pretty difficult for Togepi. And you'd think Faulkner might be one of them. I mean, Togepi doesn't really get an attacking move until, well, it gets swift in Union Cave. Surely that will make Faulkner difficult, no? Well, sorta. You see, the problem with Togepi is the only attacking move it gets is Metronome. I mean, calling it an attacking move isn't even true. It randomly selects one of the 250 moves that are in the game, and hopefully you get the right combination to defeat the Pokemon. That's actually not as hard as you think. I probably would have won, except they ran out of power points, and that's because Metronome doesn't just call on attacking moves, it calls on status moves too. And for the record, there are a few moves Metronome cannot call, like Counter, Protect, there's a list. But yeah, you just kind of have to keep trying and hope you get good moves. Honestly, it was really fun and kind of hilarious to see what crazy moves I would use next. Cheering for Togepi to win was super entertaining. And it looks like I have this one in the bag until Togepi uses self-destruct. This is actually really fun. On my third attempt, however, I was able to defeat Faulkner. I got Flamethrower turn one, Attract which failed, Fire Spin missed, and then Waterfall knocked out Pidgey. I'm at half HP. I used Charm to decrease Gust. Then I used Metronome, but Taunt Pass fails. Aurora Beam is super effective and crits. And then Sonic Boom does 20 damage, knocks out Pidgeotto. It might appear I just got lucky, but after testing this off stream, anecdotally, I can tell you about one in every three battles I would win. So in comparison to someone like Brock, that's actually really easy. By the time we battle Bugsy, we no longer have to rely on Metronome because we have Swift. And Swift will make relatively quick work of even quote-unquote defensively bulky Pokemon like Metapod and Kakuna. Two of the absolute worst Pokemon I've ever seen a gym leader use. No idea why they didn't give Bugsy like Ariados and Ledian would make a ton of sense. After knocking them out, however, Scyther is going to be a problem. It's a very powerful Pokemon. And while I do try to confuse it and then use Metronome hoping to get something like Rock Slide, I do decent damage, but not really all that much and Scyther is easily able to knock me out in just a few turns. In my second attempt, I use Swift once again against Metapon and Kakuna. The thing I really don't want to see is being poisoned. That would really suck and of course that's exactly what happens. And that sucks because I wanted to see how much Swift would do Unfortunately, if I'm going to be poisoned, I need to really rely on good luck with Metronome. Once again, we don't get it and we're knocked out. So Bugsy's looking kind of difficult, right? Well, on my next attempt, we get kind of average luck with Metapod. Four KO, two tackles, four damage. That's not a big problem. Against Kakuna, we actually get really good luck. We are not poisoned and we get a crit, but it's all up to Scyther, right? Scyther goes for Fury Cutter, it doubles every turn, so I go for Sweet Kiss, I confuse the Scyther, it hits with Quick Attack the next turn, I go for Metronome, I get Gust, super effective but doesn't do very much damage. Scyther snaps out of Confusion, goes for Quick Attack, does very good damage, I go for Wing Attack off Metronome, that's pretty good, it's at half HP. Scyther opts to go for Fury Cutter, bad decision, I go for Sweet Kiss, I really need some good luck here. Unfortunately, I don't get it. Scyther goes for Quick Attack, but shockingly, I actually survive on 2 HP. And then I get Metronome Pain Split, which adds our HP together, averages them. So we had 22 combined, and now we each have 11. That's really good. Now Scyther's confused, hits itself in confusion, and I Metronome Poison Sting, which gets a crit. I think the crit mattered. And again, third try victory. Two wins out of six battles is pretty good, but surely Whitney is going to pose a much greater challenge. She's got Miltank, famous rollout. I mean, come on, this is gonna take many, many attempts. Winnie leads with Clefairy. I have Headbutt now, it does about half. Clefairy goes for Metronome, misses with Whirlpool, and we knock it out. Now Miltank uses rollout, but misses, and I hit it with a sweet kiss. Miltank then goes for Stomp, which is 65 base power, does decent damage. 
I go for Charm. Same idea as with Faulkner, gotta get that damage down. Miltank then hits its Elven Confusion, and I decide to go for Rollout. The TM is just north of Goldenrod. Unfortunately, Miltank does not hit its Elven Confusion, goes for Stomp, and I get a flinch, so Rollout strats are not gonna work. Miltank then uses a Tract, which is very annoying. I go for Headbutt, it does decent damage, but this isn't looking good. Miltank hits with Rollout, but thankfully I fight through the Attract and get off Sweet Kiss, so now it's a 50-50 chance that each of us can attack. Miltank is confused, it does hit with Rollout, I am in love, I don't attack. Miltank is confused, it hits with Rollout again, I'm in love, I hit with Rollout, Miltank hits itself in confusion, but then I can't attack the next turn, Miltank uses Stomp, and I lose. So, no first try victory, but that wasn't too bad. The next battle, Clefairy uses Waterfall, gets a critical hit, and I'm at only 33 HP for Miltank. It hits me with Stomp, it crits. So could it be our third try getting a third try victory? I had a bit of a different idea this time. I go for Rollout against Clefairy. It goes for Double Slap. I'm at 38 HP. Unfortunately, Rollout misses not once, but twice. So I have to reset. That's just really bad luck. I don't even want to count that as an attempt. I equip Barry to get a little bit more HP. Try number four, I'm gonna do the rollout thing. Clefairy's metronome's getting good luck, it hits with Blizzard, but thankfully, the third hit of rollout knocks it out. Now in comes Miltank. It uses rollout, does not do very much damage. I hit with rollout, does a ton of damage because I got a critical hit, but you know what? After Miltank hits me as long as I hit, we would've won anyway. Not many Pokemon have enough HP for a fourth turn and fifth turn rollout, even with the puny attack of Togepi. So Whitney did prove a little bit more challenging, but all it took was a slight modification to the strategy, and in my second attempt with rollout strats, I was able to knock out Whitney, and in my first attempt, I got unreasonably unlucky. Togepi isn't even particularly overleveled, so a 30% success rate? Not looking bad. But in all honesty, this is typically when the game gets a lot easier. After you defeat Whitney, a large chunk of the game opens up, and Togepi is in the fast level up group. So as long as I'm patient, I can gain a ton of levels before I defeat Morty, who already is at a massive disadvantage because I'm a normal type and he uses ghost Pokemon. And so I only ended up battling the Kimono Sisters first before I challenged Morty for the first time. Ghastly goes for Curse, and like with Whitney, I'm gonna go for Rollout. Thankfully, Ghastly goes for Spite, and even after being hit by Curse, I'm at 75% HP for the final three Pokemon. Haunter then uses Hypnosis, but don't worry, I've equipped a Mint Berry. It's located right outside of Moomoo Farm. I hit with Rollout, and we don't knock it out. That's gonna be bad. In Gen 2, Curse only activates if we don't knock out a Pokemon, so we're at half HP. It also gets a chance to attack me, misses with Hypnosis. So that is turn 4 Rollout. We're gonna one-shot Gengar, but it's probably gonna put us to sleep. Alright, so I think the battle's over here, and whoa, it goes for Mean Look! And we hit. So we've gone to Haunter. Unfortunately, that was turn five a rollout. So I don't think we can win here unless we get a couple critical hits. There's not much Haunter can do to me. It goes for mean look, curse activate. So I'm at one quarter HP. Rollout's not doing very much. Then it uses mimic, learns rollout. And unfortunately, while I do have an odd number of health, so I will get one extra turn, Haunter actually knocks me out with Rollout. One of the first times and only times I've ever seen that. Truth is, we probably should level up a little bit more so that we can one-shot the Haunter, and thus we could have a fifth turn Rollout for the second Haunter. Nonetheless, the run is going pretty quick, so I decide to try again just to see what happens. Ghastly goes for Curse, it goes for Spite, so same thing as last time. Once again, Haunter puts me to sleep, and I don't knock it out. But this time it puts me to sleep a second time, and that's when I realize, okay, this is definitely not gonna work. Time to go level up a tiny bit more. All right, I've defeated Edwin the Lighthouse. I'm gonna battle Morty again. I could use Safeguard. I opt to go for Rollout. Instead of using Spike, Ghastly uses Mean Look, which also does nothing. So we're at 62 HP, which looks good until you remember Curse always takes away a quarter of your maximum HP. So it doesn't really matter. Haunter then misses with Hypnosis. We miss with Rollout and that just can't happen. So even though we got a little bit of good luck, Rollout, which has 90% accuracy, just can't miss, so we have to try again. So once again, you've seen this before, Ghastly goes for Curse, I go for Rollout, and unfortunately, we miss with Rollout again. So, Morty has established a new record, it's gonna take us at least five tries. 
All right, let's hope we get decent rollout luck. We're gonna go for rollout. Of course, Ghastly already went for curse. Mean look doesn't matter. That's one down. Now comes out Haunter. It hits with Hypnosis, Mint Berry, and there we go. We knock it out. Gengar then misses with Hypnosis. So we're gonna knock it out, and I think we just won. Rollout misses. No. We have enough HP to maybe knock out Haunter. It's gonna mimic rollout, which is okay. But then it's gonna use it. Curse damage is starting to rack up. And because of rollout, I don't have enough HP for curse. So in a way, rollout knocks me out again. If we just didn't miss, we would have won, but we're gonna need a sixth attempt. All right, let's do this again. Ghastly, we're gonna use rollout after he uses curse. We're gonna lose HP. Mean look, we knock it out. Haunter misses with hypnosis. That's good. That means Gengar's mean look. Oh, doesn't even use hypnosis. We knock it out. Now we just have to hit the second Haunter, and we do. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I mean, the lack of an attacking move other than rollout kind of sucked. And because Ghastly outsped us, the ability to set up Curse was very big for Morty. But be honest, would you really have predicted Togepi would win one out of every four attempts versus the first four gym leaders? That's pretty good. But surely things are about to get a whole lot tougher. The next two gym leaders chronologically are a fighting type gym leader, which would have super effective moves to use against Togepi, and the steel type gym leader, which resists Togepi. Typically, in a run with a Pokemon as weak as Togepi, there's always one gym leader that takes us 10, 20 attempts. We gotta think these next two gym leaders are gonna be those types of battles, right? Well, I'm tired of walking around. I wanna start flying from location to location, so I'm gonna go battle Chuck. He leads with Primate. Primate does have Karate Chop, a fighting move. It decides to go for Leer, which fails. One in four chance that happens. I go for Double Edge, which I've just learned, and I crit one-shotting Primate. Now, Poliwrath's only fighting move is Dynamic Punch. It's a one in two chance that it hits. Unfortunately, it does hit, but I think we can see a pretty easy path to victory. Of course, we did get a critical hit last time, so it probably won't go so well. This time, Primate goes for Fury Swipes, which does pretty decent damage. I go for Double Edge, and whoa! Even without a critical hit, that almost one-shots Primate. Unfortunately, it doesn't, but we get the Quick Law activation, and we knock it out with Headbutt. Polyrath misses with Dynamic Punch. I hit with Headbutt. That doesn't do nearly enough damage, and it hits with the second Dynamic Punch. That's not great. I'm going to try one more time before I give up. So Primate this time goes for Leer. I go for Double Edge, and the crit mattered. I knock it out in one hit. Poliwrath misses with Dynamic Punch. I go for Double Edge, and whoa, I got another critical hit. And if it misses, I win. Poliwrath misses, I win. Third try, victory versus Chuck. Yes, two critical hits mattered, but of course I could have leveled up a little bit more so that Double Edge would always one shot. Holy moly, guys. That went way better than I thought it would. Now, before I fight Jasmine or Price, and I could have done this before Chuck, we can get the Team Rocket side quest out of the way. There are tons of mandatory battles. Togepi levels up really quickly, so that would have made Chuck really consistent. I'm going to be overleveled no matter what, but I'm trying not to be super mega ultra overleveled. I'm going to be honest, the title was supposed to be a bit of a joke because I call my challenges impossible challenges, and yet I've only really ever failed two. But this is actually going really, really well. In order to keep it that way, I'm going to battle Price before Jasmine. Jasmine should be a little bit tougher. Price leads with Seal. I go for Headbutt. Almost knocks it out in one hit, which is what I wanted. It goes for Icy Wind. Speed Drop's not ideal, but now I'm going to go for Rollout. Seal out speeds and goes for rest. So in fact, the Icy Wind helps me out because while Seal is snoozing, I'm going to hit with another rollout and knock it out with the third. Meaning so long as neither Dugong or Piloswine can essentially two it KO me, I'm going to win the battle. Dugong goes for Aurora Beam. Thankfully, no attack drop. Easily is going to get knocked out by rollout times four. And now it's all up to Piloswine. It does no blizzard. It goes for mist. Rollout hits. First try victory. I'm not going to lie. A little bit of good luck with how the icy wind and rest worked out for me. But I'm definitely going to take it. Because surely Jasmine with her steel Pokemon 
it's going to be next to impossible for a Togepi to knock them out, right? Well, if you go through that move pool again, you'll see that Togepi gets access to Fire Blast. And in fact, if we were playing Crystal version, it could actually learn Flamethrower. Unfortunately, it costs more than 500,000 Poké Dollars, 5,500 coins, in order to have enough coins to use at the game corner for Fire Blast, and you don't get the Amulet coin until after you defeat Jasmine, but there are plenty of trainers, didn't even need to rebattle them, collected some nuggets, and it took me like 10 minutes, but we have the TM now. It does have a 15% chance to miss, but with the TM, I'm feeling pretty good about my chances. I actually outspeed the Magnemite I hit, and obviously I'm going to one-shot with Fire Blast. That means I'm going to outspeed the second Magnemite we hit again, so it's all up to Steelix for Jasmine. And we hit, we one-shot, we are at level 50. Unfortunately, I needed to battle some trainers in order to get money. But you know what? Why make excuses for success? That is our second straight gym leader that has been a first try victory. And we're going to level up a heck of a lot more because we have to do the second part of the Team Rocket side quest. None of that is all that interesting, so I'm going to skip ahead to Claire, the final gym leader in Johto. Or actually, just before I'm about to battle Claire, because there's something you need to know. Every time I play Gold and Silver, I get the TM for Hidden Power, and obviously I test what type it is. By the fact it's super effective against the cool trainer's Dragon Pokemon, you might assume it's either Ice or Dragon. As it turns out, it's Hidden Power Dragon, which is probably the second best Hidden Power I could have asked for. Ice might have been a little bit better, but Dragon is good both against the final Gym Leader and against the Champion of Johto. And if you're a little suspicious how I got such a beneficial Hidden Power, this entire run was done live on my Twitch channel. I definitely reset a few times to get a Togepi with decent stats, but I had no idea what the hidden power was until I tested it out. And while someone might suspect that, in fact, just on the emulator, I have a cheat in order to make Togepi's hidden power what I want, this run was being performed from a real cartridge of Pokemon Silver on my Retron 5, as most of my runs are. Nonetheless, as I said, I did get insanely lucky. In fact, I'd like to go after the run and see with a cheating device exactly how strong the hidden power was. Because based on the damage it did to Dragonair, it might be near 70 base power, which is the strongest hidden power can be. Until Generation 6, hidden power could range from 30 to 70. So I think I might have near 70 hidden power Dragon. And with that, how easy is Claire going to be? We're so over leveled at this point, we actually outspeed Dragonair, we hit, and we don't quite one shot. It uses Thunder Wave, which is very bad. The next turn, however, it goes for Dragon Breath, which does 16 HP. We knock out Dragonair number one. Out comes Dragonair number two. It also goes for Dragon Breath, also does very little damage. We hit with Hidden Power Dragon, still doesn't knock out Dragonair in one hit. Goes for Dragon Breath again. Thankfully, we haven't missed a turn yet, and that is two down. Out comes Dragonair number three, and while Dragon Breath isn't doing that much on its own, it is starting to stack up. That did way less damage, so it's not even a range. Assuming we hit, which we do, we should be at just over one-third HP for Kingdra. Kingdra goes for Surf. It does really decent damage, and unless we crit, we're gonna lose. We don't crit. So unfortunately, our streak of first try victories is going to end. We come very close to knocking out Kingdra, but not quite. So my plan was to level up until Hidden Power Dragon won a KO'd, but chat asked to see if Return would do more damage, which has replaced Double Edge. And it one-shots Dragonair. And the second Dragonair. And the third Dragonair. And as it turns out, Surf doesn't do all that much to me. Return is going to two-hit KO Kingdra. Okay, that was a critical hit, but we still win. So I'm going to credit chat for convincing me to try one more time. Even though Togepi's special attack is stronger, and even though Hidden Power Dragon seems to be doing a lot of damage, Return's higher base power and the same type attack boost of 1.5 was enough to defeat Claire. Could have been a first try victory if I just gone Return, but I will take a second try victory. With 8 gyms defeated, we have a 35% win rate with Togepi. Having done a ton of these in Generation 1, let me tell you, there are fully evolved Pokemon with way worse win rates, that was hard to say, than Togepi has right now. But the Elite Four is still tricky. They are kind of halfway through the game in a way, but they have good Pokemon, and the typings aren't great for Togepi. Before we battle them, I just realized they haven't shown a rival battle yet, so we can do that right now. 
We use Return in one shot Sneasel. We're almost double its level. We use Return, but Golbat hits us with a Confuse Ray. We hit ourselves in Confusion once, twice, and the third time we hit with Return. That's not bad. Magneton, we don't hit ourselves in Confusion. Outspeed and one shot with Fire Blast. Against Haunter, it uses Curse. We're no longer confused. Knock it out with Fire Blast. Kadabra uses Future Sight, but it's not going to hit because Meganium, we outspeed, we one-shot with Fire Blast. We're at level 63, which I said, Togepi's in the fast level up group, more mandatory trainers. It's a pretty high level. Is it going to be high enough to beat the Elite Four? If I had to guess, I would say that it's probably not, but there's no reason we shouldn't try. With that said, let's commence our first battle versus Will. Will leads with Zatu, it goes for Psychic, and it does decent enough damage. I go for Return, and we do one-shot Zatu number one, which is pretty good. Jinx I'm a little worried about because it has Lovely Kiss, and there it is, it misses. One in four chance it misses with Lovely Kiss. We hit with Return, that is definitely gonna one-shot, two down. Now, Executor is pretty slow. I do have Fire Blast, so I'm gonna use it. We hit, and we one-shot Executor, three down. Next comes out Slowbro. We're gonna go for Return. We outspeed, it does half. It uses Curse, so it's gonna be a three KO. It goes for Psychic, which is not powered up by Curse. We knock out Slowbro. Final Zatu, goes for Psychic. We go for Return. It just survives. Max Potion, it may have been a range. All right, it wasn't a range. But Psychic doesn't knock us out, and we win on six HP. So leveling up might help a little bit here. But I'm pretty happy, first try victory versus Will. For now, we're gonna lose somewhere, but it is nice to see that. All right, next up is Koga. He leads with an Ariados. I'm gonna go for return, I outspeed, and I one-shot, one down. Next comes out Venomoth. It goes for Supersonic, and unfortunately it hits. Only a 55% chance. Now it's a one in two chance. I do use Fire Blast, it doesn't miss, and we're easily gonna one-shot Venomoth, two down. Next comes out Fortress. Wouldn't be the worst thing if we hit ourselves in Confusion, but we don't, and we don't miss, and it's double super effective, so we're easily gonna knock out Fortress. That is three down. We actually outspeed Muck, and we're not confused anymore. We hit with Return. Muck goes for Minimize, which isn't great. I do love how it turns the sprite into a little star, and even though it's tiny, we hit it with Return, and there's only one Pokemon left, Crobat, which is easily gonna outspeed us. Just like Muck before it, Crobat raises its evasion with double team, but just like Muck, we hit with return, but it's not a one to KO, just like with Muck. Crobat then uses wing attack, which is much better than toxic, and we hit with return, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. We lost just 23 HP for our second first try victory, but even though I make fun of him a ton in red and blue, Bruno does get progressively better as the games go on and having a fighting type Elite Four member facing off against normal type Togepi, I think Bruno should win here. I mean, I'm gonna have to be a little creative because I'm at a massive type disadvantage. In fact, even for Onyx, I don't have anything really great to use. That said, the game literally doesn't let you go backwards here, so we have to go forwards, try and battle Bruno, and let's hope for the best. First Pokemon is Hitmontop. We actually outspeed, which I'm stunned by, we don't quite one-shot. It goes for Dig, which is fine. I'm just going to use Hidden Power. It hits with Dig, does 15 damage. We knock it out with Hidden Power. Next comes out Hitmonlee. It outspeeds, goes for High Jump Kick. We have a nice amount of HP left, but even nicer, we one-shot the Hitmonlee. Now, I believe Hitmonchan's only fighting move was Mock Punch, so we actually survive. It does have better defense. And it just hangs on, so we're gonna lose. That sucks. Oh, never mind. We just hang on. So if Machamp misses twice with Cross Chop, we're gonna win. I don't know why that would happen, but it could. So, moment of truth. We actually outspeed. We do decent damage, and it hits. I didn't think I'd outspeed Machamp. So, overall, that wasn't bad. If we could raise our level just a little bit, so we could one-shot Hitmonchan... I don't know, could we one-shot the Elite Four from there? Now, to be quite honest, one of the fastest ways of leveling up is to battle the Elite Four again, and I'll learn some stuff, such as the fact that Zatu number one is also a range. So that's something that we also would fix by leveling up. 
More importantly though, I'm just going to skip ahead to Bruno because maybe there's a chance we can win and then we don't even have to level up anymore. So it's all upside. So this is our battle against Bruno Tuno and if you notice I use hidden power, part of the reason is that I don't have a lot of power points left because I'm anticipating a loss and you can't really get many power point restoring items. Him on Lee decided to go for double kick, which is going to leave me with a little bit more HP heading into Machamp. But unfortunately, I go for Fire Blast, I don't get the burn, which I was kind of hoping for, and I don't get the miss. So the nickname Bruno Tuno actually became even a little bit more apt because Bruno is right now 2-0. Not bad. Anyway, there are some rare candies I forgot, so I'm going to go travel back to Johto, level up a bit more, get some more rare candies, and try again. Alright, so now I'm at level 71 versus Bruno, and Return does one-shot Hitmontop. Unfortunately, Hitmonlee still outspeeds Togepi. It does go for Double Kick, which is good, but it takes away a chunk of HP, which is bad. We still do knock it out. The big question is whether we one-shot Hitmonchan, but it goes for Mock Punch and Crits. So, once again, one shot from a champ will knock me out, and that is exactly what happens here. Very unfortunate. I do think, though, I could beat the Elite Four at this level, so I actually did another attempt, and this time, Hitmontop decides to use Detect, but we still knock it out, it can't attack me. But now out comes Hitmonlee, and whoa! We outspeed it, so it was a speed tie. That's pretty cool. And that means that even if Hitmonchan decides to use Mock Punch, we have more than enough HP for Machamp, we use Return, no critical hit, maybe Cross Drop will miss, it doesn't, and we survive. No critical hit there. I don't care if Bruno heals because we're doing more than half and we outspeed, so Machamp will not get another opportunity to attack me, and now we need Hidden Power Dragon to one-shot Onyx? It does. Alright, not bad. So, that took four attempts, but we got by Bruno, and now we make it to one of the more annoying Elite Four members, Karen. I'm not sure why they made both Koga and Karen a huge fan of lowering accuracy, but it is not my favorite thing. Pokemon Stadium 2 loves that. But what I would love more than anything would be to first try both Karen and Lance. Probably not gonna happen, but let's see. Karen leads with Umbreon, which is the trolliest Pokemon, but unfortunately, the biggest obstacle might be me forgetting to heal my power points. You can see my disappointment in myself. We only have four returns and there are five Pokemon. Because of that, I decide to go for rollout strats. We get a critical hit. It uses Confuse Ray though, which is really bad. We do hit again with rollout and we do really decent damage because we got a critical hit. Thankfully, it goes for faint attack and not sand attack. That did like nothing. And whoa, we snapped out of confusion. <laughs> okay, so we're going to one shot whatever Pokemon comes out next. Turns out that Pokemon's going to be Vile Bloom. We outspeed, we hit, Vile Bloom down, two down. Next comes out Gengar, it does outspeed and goes for Curse. That kind of wastes the max power rollout, but that's okay. Murkrow uses Faint Attack, but Return is easily going to one-shot, and now all that's left is Houndoom. Doesn't have great defense, goes for Flamethrower, and we one-shot. So Togepi has first tried every single member of the Elite Four except for Bruno, which is really funny based on how much I make fun of him in Red and Blue. All that said, I had a bit of a choice to make. Unlike in my Red and Blue series, the premise of these runs is whether it's possible to beat the game with whatever Pokemon. And to be perfectly honest, the other four members of the Elite Four seem pretty easy. So I'm going to save in front of Lance in case we lose, but based on how this run has gone lately, Togepi might actually first try the champion. I, I doubt it, but that would be hilarious. Lance leads with Gyarados. I decide to go for Return as opposed to Rollout, but if I lose, I might try Rollout. Gyarados likes to prefer Rain Dance, which it does go for, so we can knock it out before it does anything. Next, I wanted to see how much my various attacks would do to Dragonite. It outspeeds, which is bad, but Thunder Wave misses, which is good. Hidden Power Dragon, which didn't do as much versus Dragonair, does about three quarters to Dragonite. It then goes for Hyper Beam, which deals 50 damage, not bad, but not good enough. We're going to knock it out. That's two down. Now, out comes Dragonite number two, and I decide it's time to go for rollout because of Aerodactyl. I miss turn one, but so does Dragonite. I don't miss turn two, but unfortunately, neither does Dragonite. That means it's now going to outspeed me. It goes for a Hyper Beam, and we do hit, which is good. 
But after Dragonite recharges, we do miss turn three. We're hit by another Hyper Beam. And while we'll knock out Dragonite number two, Aerodactyl outspeeds and goes for Hyper Beam. So that's not going to work. Still, we've made some pretty decent progress. Let's just try Lance again. Once again, he leads with Gyarados. And I think about it a little bit, I decide to go for Rollout. It is not a 2 hit KO, meaning Gyarados has a chance to use Hyper Beam. But we will get an opportunity to knock out whatever Pokemon comes out next. It's a Dragonite. Hits with Thunder Wave, but I've equipped the Paralysis Cure Berry. And we do knock it out, obviously. Now we need Thunder Wave to... Whoa! Okay, leveling up means we either Speed Tight or Outspeed Lance's Dragonite. That's kind of good to know, but that's going to be three down. Unfortunately, we have to start Rollout again for Aerodactyl. It goes for Hyper Beam and it misses. We don't miss with Rollout. It's going to be a 2 hit KO, I think. Aerodactyl somehow misses again with Hyper Beam. So we've actually knocked it out without it doing any damage. We might have just won. Charizard is double weak to roll out. It goes for Flamethrower, does pretty decent damage, but no burn. We have over half HP, just over half HP. We hit, we knock it out. Final Dragonite's probably gonna go for Outrage. If we hit, we win. It goes for Outrage, we hit, we win. Wow, second try victory versus Lance. I, I can't believe it. Honestly, I, I know Gold and Silver aren't the most challenging games, but for Togepi to be this good, it's really incredible. We did re-battle some members, but if we're not double counting, if we just count the first try victories as first try victories, that's three first try victories, a second try victory versus Lance, and a fourth try victory versus Bruno. That gives Togepi almost a 50-50 win rate. It's actually 40%. That's unbelievable, and we're going to get closer to 50-50 in Kanto because Kanto gyms are notoriously easy. Even though you can battle Lieutenant Surge right away, I do enjoy going in the intended order from Red and Blue. So with that said, I did everything I need to battle Brock, and even though he's the Rock-type gym leader, I'm fairly certain we're going to win pretty easily. We got Psychic from Mr. Psychic, and that's going to one-shot Graveler. It's going to one-shot Rhyhorn. We're at level 77 now. It doesn't one-shot Omastar, but Surf does next to nothing. Onyx, well, we already know that even Hidden Power Dragon would one-shot. Psychic obviously does. And Kabutops, its special defense is worse than Omastar's. It took six attacks to knock out Brock's Pokemon. In the anime, Togepi was Misty's Pokemon. So surely, if there's someone who knows how to defeat a Togepi, it's Misty, right? Looks like her Psyduck evolved, but not going to help it from being one-shot by return. That's one down. Next, she sends out Quagsire, and give it credit, it survives return. It doesn't actually hit me with an attack, but that's still pretty cool. Lapras is fairly bulky. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to one-shot. I don't come all that close. Blizzard could freeze. It doesn't. I don't think Fire Blast used by me would automatically thaw me. I, I don't remember. I mean, who cares? We knock out Lapras. Misty has just one more Pokemon, her Starmie, it outspeeds, hits me with Confuse Ray, and I hit myself in Confusion. Then it uses Surf, and I attack, I, whoa, don't one-shot. Starmie then uses Recover, and Misty did better than Brock. So that's kind of cool, but still, another first try victory for Togepi. Civilian Surge is up next, and he does have a lot of Pokemon. Raichu outspeeds, but misses with Thunder, we knock it out with Return. Electrode uses double team, but we hit, we knock it out with return. Magneton, we outspeed, we knock it out with fire blast. Electrode is going to outspeed, it goes for double team. This time we miss once, oh my god, come on. Okay, finally we hit and we knock it out. And then Electabuzz also outspeeds, but doesn't actually attack me. The only one who tried was Raichu, and it missed. So that went pretty well. Now, in the games, the fourth gym leader is Erika, but in the anime, for some reason, Sabrina was fourth. So we're going to go in anime order and battle Sabrina next, because why the heck not? She leads with Espeon. It goes for Sand Attack. What is with the accuracy? At least it missed, and we one-shot. Next comes Mr. Mime. We actually outspeed Mr. Mime, and we one-shot. Not bad. We're not going to one-shot Alakazam. <sighs> why did I have to go for a flex? Please one-shot. No! No Hyper Potions, just wasting time at this point. Thankfully, Sabrina goes for Recover, and we're probably going to do enough, we do, to knock out Alakazam. That is four gym badges in just four attempts. 
Now, I know some of you think I battled Sabrina because I just forgot Erica, and you'd be wrong because I battle her now. We still have Fire Blast. We miss. Tangela uses Bind, but it's not Gen 1 Bind, so we knock it out. I'm going to use Return versus Jump Bluff. I don't actually know how I would sped. Isn't Jump Bluff supposed to be really fast? Whatever. We knock it out. We're at level 79. I guess that's how. Victory Bell, I use Fire Blast because when else am I going to use it? And now we're at level 80. Finally, we have Blossom, and we go for Fire Blast. It hits. And we beat Erica, shockingly, in just a single try. Janine is next, and she uses level 30 Pokemon, so I'm not too worried. Crobat outspeeds, but Screech's not gonna matter. Weezing is next. It has pretty good special, but we go for Fire Blast. Why even go for Psychic? You know what? I'll go for it again, and it goes for Toxic, but that's okay. Eridos is next. It's level 33, guys. Level 33, Venomoth level 39, but to make up for that, she uses a dire hit, which isn't going to matter because it gets knocked out in just one hit. Six battles, six victories, all that are left are Blaine and Blue. Blaine only has three Pokemon, but one of them is a rock Pokemon, the first one, Macargo. I go for Rollout. It's a three shot because it uses Curse, and of course I miss, so I have to go for Rollout again. Magmar, it's still one-shots, even though it was just the second hit. Rapidash outspeeds, it goes for Fire Blast and misses, and we knock it out. So, seven gym badges, seven victories. Blue, though, is a little tougher. He has a very team, the levels are a little higher. Perhaps, finally, we're gonna have a bit of a challenge. Will good old rival Fievel end our win streak? Pidgeot outspeeds and goes for wing attack. It does somewhat decent damage. Return does not one shot. It goes for wing attack again, and I knock it out with return. That's one down. Alakazam comes out next, and it goes for reflect. That's actually really, really bad. We don't knock out Alakazam, and this could be bad against other Pokemon. It then goes for psychic, so I'm actually at half HP. Reflect is up, and only two Pokemon are knocked out. Rhydon comes out next. I don't have a super effective move, so I have to go for Psychic. It doesn't one-shot. Rhydon goes for Earthquake, and one more hit will knock me out. I've knocked out Rhydon, but that's only three down, with only one more hit, probably, for Togepi. Out comes Gyarados, and it actually outspeeds. Hyper Beam connects. And we finally lose. Now that looked pretty bad, but I actually wasn't using the most optimal strategy. Let me show you what I mean. So this time I have a bit of a different strategy for Pidgeot. It goes for wing attack and I decide to go for rollout, but more importantly, I've equipped leftovers. Pidgeot then uses mirror move, so it goes for rollout, which is not gonna do as much as wing attack. It's gonna be a three a KO to knock out Pidgeot, but with Leftovers Recovery, that's just minus 17 HP heading to Alakazam. This time, Alakazam is gonna be a one-shot, even if it uses Reflect, which it just did, because a fourth turn rollout does way too much damage. We're not gonna one-shot Rhydon, but it's still gonna be a two a KO. It's not a big deal. Speaking of Rhydon, we're nearly at full HP. Fifth turn rollout, Reflect is up. It's resisted, still does really decent damage. Rhydon decides to go for Sandstorm, which is going to take away 1 16th of my health. It actually takes away 1 8th, but with leftovers, it's going to be 1 16th. I no longer am locked into Rollout, so I can go for Psychic and knock out Rhydon. And now we've made it past Rhydon with... Okay, we're going to level up. Sandstorm, lefties, 170 HP. Now this time, Gyarados goes for Rain Dance. I have to go for Psychic because with Reflect, I think it's going to do more than Return. Gyarados then misses with Hydro Pump, which would have done really good damage in the rain. We hit with Psychic again, and one more hit, especially after the special defense drop, will knock it out. Reflect is faded as the rival heals. I go for Return. It does just about half. Hydro Pump hits, but with Gyarados' terrible special attack, it actually doesn't do all that much, and we make it to Executor at almost 75% health. I can't go for Fire Blast because it's raining, so I go for Return. It does about half. Executor goes for Leech Seed, which is actually really annoying. The rain stops. I decide to go for Return. I get a critical hit and knock out Executor. All that's left is the Arcanine. It outspeeds and goes for Flamethrower. does decent damage. I go for Return. Might be a two-shot, but with Leech Seed, I'm not so sure. It goes for Flamethrower again. I think I'd survive one more hit, but we knock it out. 16 Gym Leaders, 4 members of the Elite Four, 1 Champion, 
It only took us 41 attempts to win those 21 battles, which is an over 50% win rate. However, if there's any trainer that's going to really put a dent in that, it's red. And this is part of the reason I don't love doing challenges in either Gold and Silver or even Heart Gold Soul Silver, because the difficulty spike between the rest of the game in red, especially in Heart Gold Soul Silver, is enormous. With that said, Togepi's done pretty good, so maybe it'll do well against red? I kinda doubt it. But hey, only one way to find out. Right off the bat, there's a problem. Pikachu knows Charm, and it outspeeds we're basically the same level. That means Return isn't even doing half. Pikachu then goes for Thunder, and I'm paralyzed. So that's not good. I try again, and this time Pikachu goes for Thunder first. I don't get paralyzed, but Return, as you'd expect, does not one-shot. Red then goes for Full Restore. I'm hoping it's a range, but I do even less than the first time. Red heals again, and this time we actually do knock out Pikachu. We're gonna need to level up a little bit more. We're gonna need that to be consistent, but still, one down. Next comes out Espeon. It outspeeds and goes for Psychic. That does really good damage. Return does about half, and Psychic is going to knock me out. Now, at this point, I've actually stopped counting attempts because I'm just trying to figure out a strategy. And after Thunder misses, Return does one shot. Problem is, Espeon can go for Reflect. And if it does that, we do like under a quarter. I can go for Curse, and it's going to boost my attack. I do pretty decent against Espeon. That would be a 3 at KO. But at this point, it's just so clear I need to level up. I try a couple more times in vain, but it didn't really get very far. But now I'm back and I'm at level 90. This was actually my third attempt because Pikachu kept using Charm. So I go for Shadow Ball that hopefully puts Pikachu within healing range. If Red heals, I go for Curse. Pikachu hits with Thunder, but that should set me up better for Espeon. Espeon goes for Reflect. Return is now doing half. Psychic does a lot, but we finally made it to Snorlax for the very first time. Snorlax, we still outspeed. It goes for Amnesia. We're now getting it to half health, but unfortunately, with Reflect still up, its Body Slam knocks me out, but we're making progress. I came up with a bit of a different strategy. Thankfully, in this one, Pikachu misses with Charm, and I'm gonna go for Rollout. On turn two, it hits with Thunder, and on turn three, Pikachu heals, and I knock it out. Now, even if Espeon uses Reflect, which it doesn't, it goes for Psychic, we probably would one-shot with Rollup, but more importantly, I think we one-shot the Snorlax. We're obviously going to outspeed, it has great bulk, but we knock it out. Crit may have mattered, who cares, and we still have the leftover, so we're gaining a little bit of HP too. Unfortunately, I've deleted Fire Blast, Venusaur sets up Sunny Day, that would have comboed perfectly. I go for Return, it's not even doing half. It goes for Solar Beam. We come very close to knocking out Venusaur. I can rebuy Fire Blast if I need it, I just don't have it on me, and this is what stinks about single-use TMs. You never know when you might need them, and unfortunately, if I delete either Shadow Ball or Curse, I'm not going to get them back. Still, I do think there is a modification to the strategy that might be even better. Once again, Pikachu misses with Charm, and this time I set up Curse. Turn 2, Thunder hits, I hit with Rollout. Turn 3, Thunder misses, and this time Rollout knocks out Pikachu in just two hits. Unfortunately, Espeon sets up Reflect, but that is going to be okay. Rollout's not going to knock it out. It goes for Psychic, and we're going to knock out Espeon as long as we hit, which we do. We're going to be at just over half HP for Snorlax, and this fifth turn Rollout should still knock it out. Let's see... No, it doesn't. And if... Oh, red doesn't heal. Okay, that's good. Now out comes Venusaur. This time it goes for Solar Beam right away. Wait a minute. I'm gonna lose, but I actually have a really good idea here. I need an attempt where Pikachu actually cooperates with me. So I'm gonna go for Curse. Charm missed, which is good. Thunder missed, which is really good. It missed again. We're at full HP heading to Espeon. Reflect, we've seen this before. Psychic, so we're going to be about 140 HP for Snorlax. Rollout's not going to knock it out, which is fine. Amnesia, it's not an attack, so we're at 150 HP for Venusaur. This time, I'm going to go for Curse, and watch this. I'm going to go for Detect, and as long as it doesn't go for Sunny Day, 
I can set up as many curses as I like. And I can alternate between curse and detect. I am worried about Sunny Day since that would power up Charizard as well. So I'm just going to knock it out here. We've only set up three curses. Hopefully that's enough. Here comes Charizard. It went for Flamethrower. It's why I didn't want to see Sunny Day. And it basically does half. Return should easily one shot. And now all that's left is Blastoise. It's going to outspeed me. What's it going to use? Rain Dance is good. And no. One more curse, man. Oh, that's going to suck. Surf's going to knock me out. Wait a minute. I'm going to go for Detect. I have a little bit more HP now. And now I should win. It goes for Surf. 52 HP. We had more than enough. That was pretty amazing. Red took a really long time. But that took 3 hours and 51 minutes. That's it. It actually took me about an hour to defeat Red. So without Red, this could have been under 3 hours. Yes, it's with speed up. But that is not bad at all. Maybe one day there'll be a version of Gold and Silver that has a little bit more balance. That is a little bit better for challenge runs. But for now, it seems like if we want a really difficult challenge, we have to stick to either really gimmicky Pokemon or the weakest of the weak Pokemon. With that said, thank you guys for watching. I'll probably have to try Togepi and Emerald or Fire Red. That would be a lot harder. But until then, see y'all later.